Coming up on the cold front, we are going to talk all about hurricanes. We're going to tell you what they are, how they form, some historical hurricanes, and even some safety tips. You're watching the cold front on VU TV. Welcome to Season 3 of The Cold Front, talking all about hurricanes. Hurricanes are a wonder of nature. These are beasts of storms. They form in the tropics. Uh, unlike uh, storms up here in the Midwest, mm -hmm. these things do not have fronts. They're just a big cluster of, organized cluster of thunderstorms spinning. They drop a lot of rain, uh, very windy, and can cause a lot of destruction. Definitely, and there have been a lot of historical hurricanes throughout the history of the United States, and even obviously before the U.S. was even founded, there's just been um, hurricanes have been around since basically the beginning of time because weather is always an evolving thing. It's just we're starting to learn more about it. That's why it seems that we have more hurricanes now, but it's really just we're learning a lot more about these wonders of nature. And unlike other severe types of weather that we're used to around here, there's tornadoes, severe thunderstorms, flash flooding. Those are all very short-lived, very localized storms. Warning time, nil to a couple of minutes, maybe 20 minutes if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. Hurricanes are a little bit different. These storms are absolutely massive. And because of their large-scale nature, you're getting a lot better lead time in warnings but they affect a much greater area for a much longer period of time. Days on end, in fact, Definitely. of heavy rain, destructive rain, and winds. There have been hurricanes that have lasted weeks, you know, from the time they developed as what we call a tropical wave or like a tropical cyclone. They've lasted for weeks. I think some of them have even lasted around two weeks. So they are definitely very long-lived, whereas, like you mentioned before, like a tornado could last, I don't know, five, ten, maybe twenty minutes, hurricanes can last for weeks. So that's definitely a huge difference in that. Yeah, and the, like with a tornado a couple hundred yards wide, mm -hmm. hurricanes are hundreds of miles wide and uh, just absolutely devastating. They can hit large areas and they can cause damage in lots of different ways. In fact, they can spawn tornadoes, but the, their main threat is the heavy winds the rain and the storm surge that it brings up with it. Um, we're going to quick uh, take a little bit of a look at a couple famous hurricanes. Um, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the Galveston, Texas hurricane uh, from September 8, 1900. This storm was not named because storms weren't named back then. It was just a really big storm that had right. a lot of devastation. And part of the thing with the Galveston hurricane uh, hit Galveston, Texas. There's no storm wall at that time in 1900. Right. Nobody thought they needed it. We, mm -hmm. They didn't really know that much about hurricanes and because of that this became the deadliest United States natural disaster and the death toll estimate is very yeah. vague and the reason for that is they really don't know. The storm surge was about 15 feet and they estimated about 6,000 to 12,000 people died and were swept away. It was just very hard to count uh, how, many, how much did. It caused $30 million in damage. Yeah. Just absolutely, pretty much took Galveston off the map. It was a very prospering city at the time. And it didn't stop at Galveston, Texas. Oh, yeah. This thing was still a, considered a tropical mm -hmm. storm by the time it made it up to the Midwest. In fact, parts of southeast Wisconsin got over four inches of rain due to this storm. And it also caused 65 mile an hour wind gusts by the time it was in New York City. So we're talking from Texas all the way up to New York City. Right. And I believe someone was actually killed in New York City. I think there was a wind gust that came off um, the remnants of the storm and it caused some debris to fly and hit a young man in the head and it actually um, crushed his skull and killed him. So definitely not your average storm. No, it's yeah. very, it, very powerful. And these storms, and that just a lot of freak accidents happen. Definitely. But that's just what can happen with these things. It's just very, very bad. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about some other famous hurricanes, including Hurricane Katrina. Definitely. You're watching The Cold Front on VUTV. 
Hi, my name is Nicole Graham. I'm an admission counselor here at Valpo, and I'm on VU TV. I'm Molly, and I'm, I'm on VU TV. Right. We're from, from Kappa, Kappa Kappa Gamma. We're, we're on, on VU TV. We're always on VU TV. I'm Emily. And I'm Aliana. And we're on, we're on VU TV. Hey, what's up? I'm Milk. And I'm Matt. We're on VU TV. I'm Helen Dolly, and I'm on VU TV. Hi. Hi. My name's Claire. My name's Sam. And we're, we're on, on VU, VU TV. TV. <laughs> this can't be happening. This can't be happening. Of course it's not happening. Armored car. <laughs> Listen, having money isn't about luck. Make your own coffee, save a thousand bucks a year. Feed me. Feed the pig. So, are you going out tonight? I can't. My parents say I have to be home right after work. <sighs> That's so gay. Totally gay. Ugh, that is so Emma and Julia. Why are you saying that's so Emma and Julia? Well, you know, when something is dumb or stupid, you say that's so Emma and Julia. Mm. Imagine if who you are were used as an insult. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. up on sex don't give up on birth control either there are more methods than you think find yours at bedsider.org and welcome back to the cold front talking about hurricanes and we talked a little bit about hurricanes before but let's get right into uh, some real big name ones and if we think about the very recent past you have to remember Katrina uh, Katrina in August 29th of 2005 was a major uh, category 5 hurricane for a main landfall in New Orleans. Definitely. Katrina was absolutely devastating in so many ways. You know, we remember her, or we really shouldn't um, call them by her, but, you know, we remember Katrina as this major, historic, um, just hurricane. It actually caused $75 billion in damage. It was the costliest um, hurricane in U.S. history. It caused you know, so much that's, damage. That's, you know, what we all remember is just, you talk about all these historical hurricanes that happened, but you know Katrina was one that was right here. We remember it. It's yeah. in a very recent past, so we can use Katrina as kind of a benchmark to look at other major hurricanes in the past. Definitely, because I remember I was in eighth grade when Katrina happened, and I was interested in weather at that time. And it definitely just kind of you know drives in you know that interest that you have. Um, we we're talking about um, Katrina did reach Category Five. Um, status and that's as high as you can get for a hurricane you know there's no category six or anything like that if you're a category five or if a hurricane is category five I should say it's a pretty big deal you know you don't and that was a beast I remember looking at the was, satellite oh my, my science goodness. class it was like almost the size of the Gulf of Mexico it, it, was, it was huge and so when we, we see those pictures where um, it was in the Gulf of Mexico and it's just it it's absolutely insane and um, Katrina first made landfall actually before she hit or before it hit um, New Orleans and the New Orleans uh, Mississippi coast, um, which is the main landfall that we usually associate Katrina the other with. Thing is it didn't yeah. hit uh, New Orleans directly. It did not hit New Orleans directly. It hit more um, to the eastern coast, is more the Louisiana coast and the Mississippi coast as well. But it first made landfall um, as a very weak Category 1, just turned into a hurricane right before it hit the coast of Florida. Um, and that was on August 25th. And just a few days later, Katrina reached cat Category 5 status. And she had a central pressure of 902 millibars. And that's pretty significant just because, you know, the, we think of Category 5s, they're usually right around you know, 912 millibars. And you know, that puts, that's, put that a little in perspective if you don't yeah. know what a millibar is. It's a measurement of pressure that we do. Uh, the, the average atmospheric pressure on any given day is somewhere around 1,013 yeah. millibars, a low pressure associated with the storm that we think about here. You know, maybe around 1,000 millibars, maybe a slightly below. Mm -hmm. But 
almost 100 millibars below that is a major drop, and hurricanes do that. Mm -hmm. But Katrina was low for even a hurricane. Oh my goodness, yes. And, and that just proves that how strong that Katrina was. Uh, did weaken right before it made landfall? We were talking about before the Louisiana Mississippi coast um, it was a category four, and then it weakened to a category three right as it made landfall. And that was pretty much what we remember of Katrina. Um, very, very strong storm surges actually broke through the levees in New Orleans, and that's what caused all the devastating flooding. Um, I believe there is uh, 1,200 people killed as a result of Katrina, so absolutely devastating. And a thousand of those people were actually killed in the state of, of Louisiana, most of it because of that breach in the levee in New Orleans. Um, and there were 33 tornadoes that spawned from Katrina. I mean, you know, that, that storm was nothing to mess with. And I think part of that was it's, it has been, it's been a while before Katrina that yeah. a major hurricane hit a major yeah. city. And so there are a lot of people that remember other hurricanes and oh, it'll just blow over. But right. when you get a hurricane the size of Katrina, if it hits anywhere, it's going to do some damage. It's going to cause death. Definitely. And then when it hits a major city, it's going to do a lot more. There's more people there. And when it hits uh, New Orleans, which is below sea level, mm -hmm. so you associate the storm surge, but you also got to remember how much below sea level is and the levees break and you get that much more water to come in. It was. I don't like to use the, the term, but the perfect storm to really cause some damage. Really and a lot of it, again, people weren't properly prepared for it because it's a lot of times you just don't remember what they can do. And, and unfortunately, Katrina was a very harsh reality track for a lot of people. It really was. And, and that's just something that, you know, the National Hurricane Center who puts out um, hurricane watches and warnings, and they're the ones who issue all the advisors on anything, you know, tropical related. I mean, they did an excellent job with forecasting Katrina and forecasting a lot of these tropical storms. But sometimes, you know, we, we can't do anything with, with human will. You know, people are either, are either going to leave or they're not. And, and that's the hard part. And I think that's why Katrina was so devastating because there was proper warning. It's not like it happened. You know, it made landfall in Florida. They continued on and gained strength. So it's. It, it, it's, it's hard because they had proper warning and people just chose not to leave, which is hard. Yeah, and we all remember the Katrina from 2005, but it was not the only strong hurricane in oh 2005. Goodness, yeah. In fact, there's another hurricane just a couple, uh, a month or so later, a, a little bit so, later, yeah. that really set some records. We talked about the low pressure from Katrina. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about Wilma on October 24th of 05. Right. Um, just. 2005 was just a very active year in terms of hurricanes. There are actually three Category 5 hurricanes that occurred in that season alone. And that was Katrina, Rita, which most people remember hit the um, Gulf Coast of Texas, and then Wilma, which we're going to be talking about as well. And all three of those reached Category 5 status. So that's pretty significant, but what makes Wilma such I don't know, a significant hurricane or such a uh, rememberable hurricane was it had the lowest central pressure on record. We we're talking about how low Katrina's was at 902. Wilma broke the record. Her central pressure was 882 millibars. And that's just, that is crazy because, you know, we were talking about before, you know, an average category five is, you know, nine, you know, 12, 9, 13, something like that. So when you get something that's in the upper 800s, that's that's significant. That is a very strong storm. To put that in pressure or that pressure under pers to perspective, mm -hmm. uh, 882 millibars is somewhere around the pressure you'd be feeling somewhere halfway up the Rocky Mountains. Yes. So you know everyone knows that pressure decreases with height, and you know there's lower pressure up in Colorado. Yeah, you have to go pretty far up the Rocky Mountains to get to that pressure. Yeah. So and that's at sea level. Mm -hmm. And it just shows how massive Wilma was. And, you know, if you go and you know search images of the satellite image when um, it had the 882 millibar pressure, I mean, it was ginormous. Like it just looks like this huge white mass. It's it's really amazing. Um, and actually, the two other I guess you would say record-breaking pressures, but two memorable pressure hurricanes were Hurricane Gilbert, uh, that was back in 1988, and uh, it had a pressure of 888 millibars, and then the Labor Day hurricane, which occurred back in 1939, 
had 892 millibars. So it's it's pretty significant. So. Yeah, and uh, that 05 hurricane season, they name hurricanes, you know, it's one letter of the alphabet, switches off male and female names, and it goes all the way, you know, up from A to Z. And prior to 05, they really never ran into running out of names. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a system in place, and they had to use it in 2005. They had to use the Greek alphabet to start naming the hurricanes by the Greek alphabet. Wow. Alpha, yeah. beta, and going all the way through. And they made it quite far through that, so mm -hmm. the number of named storms was also insane. Mm -hmm. Not alone, just the number of strong storms. Yeah. And that's also something with naming storms is they do retire them if something happens. You know, Andrew, um, which we're going to be talking about very shortly, has been retired as well as Katrina, just because of all the devastation that those storms caused. And you know, Wilma did cause quite a bit of damage. Katrina, as we talked about before, seventy-five billion dollars. Well, Wilma caused a lot of damage as well, twenty-nine point one billion dollars. A lot smaller death toll, which was very fortunate. Only about twenty-two deaths. Five of those were in Florida, but you know this was after Katrina, so we definitely had you know Katrina in our minds at this time. So I think people and were and they're still majorly in the, in the middle of the recovery effort. And at so that I point. think people were just a lot more vigilant because of that. They do remember that. And you mentioned Andrew, and that was definitely. another major, major hurricane. But that was quite before 2005. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was just one year old in 1992 yeah. when Andrew struck. Yeah, I was was not well. I was just a few months old. Um, but, you know, when we come back from the break, we will be talking about Hurricane Andrew and about some other hurricanes as well. So stay tuned. Hi, everybody. I'm Dick Vitale of ESPN, and I'm on VU TV. It's awesome, baby, with a capital A. <laughs> I'm President Heckler, and I'm on VU TV. We're Air Force ROTC, and we're on, on VU TV. I'm Brandon Spinner, and I'm on VU TV. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. Do you like this top? It's so gay. Really? Yeah, it's totally gay. You know, you really shouldn't say that. <laughs> say what? Well, say that something's gay when you mean it's bad. It's insulting. What if every time something was bad, everybody said, oh, that so girl wearing a skirt as a top? Oh, you are. <laughs> Those are cute jeans, though. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. And welcome back to the cold front here on VU TV on our hurricane episodes to kicking off season three. Talked about a little bit about the season of 2005 with Katrina Wilma, among many others. But let's rewind time back to 1992 and talk a little bit about Hurricane Andrew when it hit Florida. Definitely. And other places and, after. Oh my goodness, yes. And a lot of people remember Hurricane Andrew. And for us who were only a few months old, you know, when Andrew happened, um, you ask a lot of people, and it's a hurricane that they remember because it was a significant hurricane at the time. Um, as we talk about it, you know, it was 1992 when this occurred. Um, and very, very strong hurricane. Um, its central pressure was 922, I believe, so it was fairly strong. It was a Category 4 when it hit the coast of Florida, which is a major hurricane by any standards. A uh, major hurricane is actually Category 3, 4, and 5, so if a hurricane is making landfall in 3, 4, and 5, it's definitely causing catastrophic damage, but any hurricane making landfall, even tropical storms, can cause a lot of damage, so this is a pretty big deal. Um, when her, uh, Andrew made landfall actually had 
um, sustained winds, not gusts, but sustained winds at 165 miles per hour. It had a 17 foot storm surge. Now, when you think about a storm surge, it's basically a big wall of water. And it's 17 feet high, and that's what caused a lot of the damage was the flooding as a result of that. Um, but what's interesting, though, is back in 2002, they actually reevaluated some of the data they got from um, hurricane reconnaissance aircraft, which is basically something if you hear about hurricane hunters, that's what this is. And they looked at that data, and they upgraded Andrew at landfall to a Category 5, which is really interesting, but you, you know, there have been some statements from well-known doctors who um, study hurricanes and Atlantic hurricanes, and uh, they do disagree with it just because a lot of the damage was Category 4 damage, but it's definitely very interesting that they were looking back at the storm, you know, 10 years later, and, and still looking at it, and then look, was looking at that data and upgraded, so. Um, definitely still a powerful storm back in 1992 caused two or excuse me 26 billion dollars in damage and so obviously there's a little bit of inflation there but still lots of damage that happened with that yeah Andrew was just one of those other hurricanes that hit it was major hurricane but it hit population and it caused a lot of damage just because it hit a major city right and and is one thing though when uh, President Bush senior was in office uh, the reason that um, there was actually a lot of like aid from like FEMA and you know national aid that wasn't getting to Andrew uh, the victims of Andrew fast enough and many people think that that's why um, President Bush senior was not reelected so it, everything kind of ties in a little bit it's very interesting Weather and politics. Definitely. I think that's a topic for, for a another day. That. That's though. I think that's a topic for another day. <laughs> another cold front. Definitely. Well, yeah. well we're gonna take a quick break here once again and when we come back we'll have we'll be joined by Dave Caulfield with a little personal story uh, tied with a run in with a hurricane. Stay tuned to VU TV. We're Valpo Greek Life and we're on VU TV. I'm Rachel Bacher and I'm on VU TV. We're Mock Trial and we're on VU TV. We're Student Alumni Association and we're on VU TV. We're the Acapellas and we're on VU TV. I'm Dave Klein and I'm on VU TV. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Today, today is Saturday. Hot. Today is Saturday. Yeah. Salad on Saturday, fruit on Friday, throw a ball Thursday. Water, water, Wednesday. Touch your toes Tuesday. Let's move Mondays while it's next Sunday. All the healthy children eat well and move a lot. And move a lot. And move a lot, eat well, and move a lot. 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Skip a rope Saturday, freeze tag Friday, tap dance Thursday. Hope brings Wednesday, try a veggie Tuesday. Let's move Mondays with the sweet Sunday. Eat well and move a lot. Today is Saturday. Yeah. All the healthy children. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. And welcome back to the hurricane edition of the Cold Front. I'm joined by Dave Caulfield here, who his family resides on the East Coast in the state of New Jersey. That is true. And have definitely had to experience some hurricanes, and not necessarily the record-setting hurricanes uh, by any means, but they 
just because they're not don't have a lot of wind or high central pressure doesn't mean they can cause a lot of devastation and damage. Uh, absolutely, and I think what you're referring to is back in 2011, my family uh, went through hurricane or what was hurricane and became tropical storm uh, Irene. If you don't know about Irene, come on, here you go. It's the fifth costliest hurricane in U.S. history. The only ones above it were names, you know, you may have heard of them, Katrina, Andrew, Wilma, and Ike, not necessarily in that order. Uh, Ike was second, actually, hitting uh, Texas. A couple of facts about the storm. Bayboro, North Carolina, don't know where that is, don't really care to find out, but still, they got over 15 inches of rain from the storm. That's, that's something that you should really take note of. That is a lot of rain. The storm formed. You would think 15 inches of snow would be. A oh lot. So gosh. Just imagine 15 inches of rain. Oh, 15 inches of snow. I mean, oh, if if we got the 15 inches of rain into snow, that would be day after tomorrow stuff right there. But I won't go into that. For, uh, the storm formed August 20th, 2011. Max winds. It only got up to Category Three, but still, that's nothing to sneeze at. Max winds were 120. Uh, lowest pressure 942. So that's pretty low for a Category uh, Three storm. And it was at its strongest point over the Bahamas. And not many people talk about how much damage it did to the Bahamas and the Lesser Antilles. And then even to think about the path it took, how far south it was, then it pushed up north and went right along the east coast. And that's another path that storms will take. We talked almost all, every storm we talked about was Gulf of Mexico storm or hit Florida south. Well, they can get pretty far north, too, and they can even affect New Jersey, New York, and Maine, and even Canada. On Absolutely. Canada uh, was affected by the storm when it was still uh, tropical. It was a tropical storm, then it went extra tropical, and up to all those northern seas up there, a lot of cold water, so it ended up dissipating. But still, portions of Canada, New England, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, it really just hugged that east coast all the way up, and it really couldn't have taken a more perfect path uh, if it wanted to, if it wanted to give the East Coast a lot of rain, which it really did. Um, it first made landfall in the U.S., that is, at Cape Lookout, North Carolina, as a pretty strong Category 1. And then, again, we said it hugged that East Coast. It went up that East Coast, not really making a specific landfall, and made a second landfall in a town that I know very well, Little Egg Harbor, New Jersey. That is an actual town. New Jersey has some funny towns. They have uh, brick and they have wall, and they're right next to each other. <laughs> so uh, that gives you a little bit of sense of uh, New Jersey. And then another landfall, not with the hurricane because it had become extra tropical by then. Tropical storm hit Coney Island uh, in New York. It basically really went up the East Coast as we've been talking about it, hugged it. But if we want to focus on New Jersey, uh, it actually, New Jersey was one of the hardest hit states of that whole storm. And Freehold, New Jersey, which is a shore town, southeast New Jersey, had the most rain from it, 11.27 inches. That, that's that's amazing, insane. Absolutely amazing. And Dave, uh, as your family lives so close uh, to Storm, uh, can you give us a little bit of insight on what they went through? And I know I remember last year when you'd be on the phone with them, uh, in, your family had to evacuate their, your home, didn't it? Yeah, they did. They had to stay at a hotel for a couple of days. And uh, it was interesting because when I was looking at the radar and looking at the models, the, this the uh, what do you call it? the string cheese models, right? The yeah. ones that go like that. Um, they they had it going a little bit farther off the coast, so I wasn't that worried about them. But it, it shifted late, and it did affect the whole state of Jersey, uh, more so the south part of New Jersey. But still, we got a lot uh, of rain in our town. We ended up staying at a at a local hotel by us, and we um, or I wasn't there, but my family um, they had to stay there for five days and move back eventually. School still went on though. Uh, so, <laughs> New Jersey education, what are you going to do, you know? Um, but, uh, again, and Central Jersey, actually, one portion that we they didn't think was going to get a lot of rain just because, you know, it's more centered towards Pennsylvania, a little bit more off the coast, they got a good amount of rain as well. Uh, big cities like Hoboken and Jersey City really were just completely flooded by the storm, and, and, and New Jersey ended up being declared a disaster zone by Barack Obama right after the storm passed. So, and Dave, so your family had to evacuate. Uh, so what was the immediate threat to your neighborhood that forced them out? Um, I think it was more the, the heavy rain because 
Irene was a fairly slow moving storm, so when you have that slow movingness, even if it becomes extra tropical, you still have that massive amount of rain coming down at one time. You can see Little Egg Harbor, I mean, that's a really little town, as the name suggests, but <laughs> that got over 11 inches of rain. I believe my house recorded, Hackensack recorded about uh, 7.25 inches which is still probably the most that we've ever seen. And my basement, Matt, it's, it's stuff of legend. I, I can personally remember when I was younger when uh, a couple of storms came in, there were nor'easters actually, uh, and shoveling water out of my basement by hand for hours on end. And I, I'm told that's what they had to do as well. So I felt bad that I couldn't help them out. But uh, everybody's all right, everybody's okay. Uh, there were some trees down in our area and um, actually someone's house had a tree fall on uh, their roof. So uh, what happened was there was a local collection that got them on their feet again. So in, in storms like this, it's a really great way of seeing the best in people when they help out uh, others who are less fortunate, who were affected by the storm more than they were. So like, um, how prepared was your family to deal with this? I'm sure it wasn't the first major tropical storm to hit your area. These do happen. Uh, what kind of preparations does your family take? Right, um, we have a plan, uh, and I encourage everyone watching this to have a plan, whether they, I mean, New Jersey is one of those places where you never think a tornado is going to happen, right? But we've had a number of tornadoes this year, and even last year, we're seeing more and more. And uh, Brooklyn and Queens, the, the boroughs of New York, they're starting to recognize, hey, maybe the, these batch of downed trees is because of a tornado and not just a strong gust of wind. So it's important to have a plan for any type of natural disaster. So what you need to do is stay alert to the weather forecast. That's number one, because we actually do know what we're doing. Maybe not us right now, <laughs> but the people above us, they definitely know what they're doing. So stay alert uh, to you know certain sites on the internet and on TV, some channels. And also just be prepared to move. And I know Rachel was talking about this as well. If you are called to evacuate, there's probably a good reason to evacuate. And that was so tough in New Orleans because down there, people are so loyal to that town when Katrina had happened. And they had had some near scares in the past where it, it just missed them, so they got lucky. So they're saying that would happen again. It's, if you're called to evacuate, please heed those warnings because it will end up helping you in the long run. And even if you lose some possessions, at least you have your own life and the life of your Especially family. Especially when those warnings come out. Those warnings will be out days in advance. And the longer you wait, the more packed the roads are going to be getting out. And that's why you should always have a kit set for you. You should have enough water for everybody, you know, food that won't perish. You should have this all prepackaged. If you have pet or if you need medicine, have prescriptions, you have all that. You don't want to be running around at the last minute to be able to do that. Make sure you have the tools to board up your houses if you need to leave. You, you never know. And so if you have all the stuff ready in a big box that you know fits in your car, right. you can get everyone with just the bare essentials and get out of there as fast as you can. So another thing good to know is know the roads. Not maybe not necessarily just the interstates that'll take you directly. Know a couple back highways have an alternate route in case it gets jammed. If you have to get out, maybe you don't have to take the route you want. But if you're on the coast, probably a good idea, at least on the east coast, to get west Absolutely. and get north. And that was but, a problem for some people because they waited to the last minute. And when the storm got through, uh, Garden State Parkway, that's the main road in New Jersey, for those of you who aren't aware. But that's <laughs> fine. Uh, it was impassable at almost four different points. So, you know, you may get a little ways and you're going to have to take some back roads, as Matt said. So definitely know your surroundings. That's, and that, goes, that means having a map in your car. Absolutely. And you never know if the GPS doesn't work to have it. It's mm -hmm. great. But maybe have a hard copy of your state map in your car just so you can get far enough to you can get to safety and figure things out from there. You, you, we tell you you have a couple days on the warnings, but we don't warn three days in advance just because. Right. So those warnings are necessary. This is a big storm. It's going to impact thousands of lives. And once that warning is issued, a warning by definition means it's time to act now. Absolutely. So if, for no matter what warning is issued, if it's issued, the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, these, all these places know what they're talking about. They issue a warning, it's time to get off. They issue a watch, maybe that's time to go to your, your uh, box, your package that you have, your safety kit, make sure everything is there, update it if it's needed to. Your watch is, that's when you're getting, watch is when you gotta get prepared and keep an eye on things. Warning is the time to act. Absolutely, I couldn't have said it better myself. Well, I guess that will do it for my segment. Uh, we'll be right back to wrap up the show Stay tuned, it's The Cold Front on BUTV.
As soon as they get here, we split off into our groups and go to the bathroom and get a drink and then we have snack time. And after snack time, we do an activity, whether it be going to the library, learning about um, different things, either money or college life, higher education. I learned that books are very important and that enabled to be to get smarter that you have then you had to read books. That you can learn a, a lot of stuff from books and you and so you can get smarter. Um that you can eat while studying and some people fall asleep on the couch. I love spending time with kids and just like hanging out with them, seeing them learn and grow and being able to help teach them new things. The most important aspect of college mentors for kids, kids is giving the kids um, role models that they can look up to, role models who have been successful, and to let the kids know that they too can be successful. My favorite thing was probably today when we went to the library and read books and I got to just like hang out with my little buddy and read to her and it was really fun just to watch her like learning how to read because she's in first grade and she's younger and it was, it was cool, it was bonding. That they both are very intelligent. Um, that he's always saying awesome. That um, she is a very nice buddy and she is very fun. Um, my most favorite thing about having a big buddy that you don't have to be scared when you're right by them. And when there is an activity and when, you know, the planets align just right and an activity and a day and a mentor and a GM just really um, gets through to a kid and you see that kid's face light up under the personal attention and the, they know that this is all been set up for them and they realize that they can, you know, that they are smart. It's great. Hi everybody, I'm Dick Vitale of ESPN, and I'm on VU TV. It's awesome, baby, with a capital A. That's low, that's low, that's low. Look, he's Hi, I'm Pastor Jim, and I'm on VU TV. I'm Mitch Dunham, and I'm on VU TV. Hello, I am Jeremy Kaywood, and I'm on VU TV. I'm Jonathan Johnson, and I'm on VU TV. We're, we're Sigma, Sigma Phi Epsilon, and we're on VU TV. Hey, I'm Claire Flesh, and I'm on VU TV. Yo, 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 check out this chef, right? <laughs> right? That's so gay. That's really gay. Dude, look at those tans. Please don't say that. What? Don't say that something is gay when you mean that something is dumb or stupid. It's insulting. 
It's like if I thought this pepper shaker was stupid and I said, man, and this pepper shaker is so 16-year-old boy with a cheesy mustache. Just saying. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. And this is going to wrap up this first episode of season three of The Cold Front. We talked about all about hurricanes, what makes these wonderful and scary, dangerous uh, uh, machines of the atmosphere. Uh, we talked about a couple of major cases in the Galveston way back in 1900, yeah. uh, a couple of recent Katrina, uh, Irene, Wilma, back in 92, Andrew. Went through a couple of the safety tips. Always keep that in mind. Definitely. It's better to be prepared and then be able to know what to do when it's time to act and get out of there. Definitely. Um, and if you like this episode, we definitely encourage you to watch us again. We are on channel 82. If you don't know, that is what VU TV is. Um, we are also on Facebook, VU TV Weather. Just go and like us, and you'll see all of our daily weather updates, as well as we will be posting um, all of our episodes of The Cold Front, as well as you can keep up with us on YouTube as well with Valpo VU TV. Um, and you can keep up to date with all of us here at VU TV Weather. And for everyone here, Rachel Dunsing, myself, Matthew Schaefer, guest uh, and producer, Dave Caulfield, helped us out a lot today. Mm -hmm. and thank you for watching VU TV and The Cold Front.